in verse 22 <laughs> was completely healed. In fact, from verse 19 on through that, just read, you can read the rest of this chapter. <clears throat> the story goes this way. <laughs> the daughter was raised from the dead. Amen. It's because of the man that worshipped and spoke a declaration of faith to God. Worship in itself is a declaration of faith. God, I worship you. You're almighty. There is none like you. There's nothing impossible with you. I mean, was, and that's worship. Amen. You're the greatest there is. You're all powerful. You're all knowing. You're all seeing. There is none like you. Oh, oh, there's nothing impossible with you, God. I worship you. Whew. You're moving, you move out of the realm of impossibility into the supernatural realm of all things are possible through worship. Worship. Now, go with me to Matthew 15. We're still in Matthew. Matthew, I'm going to show you the power of Jesus the bread. I'm going to show you that it only takes one crumb. Some people think it takes a whole loaf. It only takes one crumb to get everything you need from that bread. It's that powerful. In Matthew 15, look at verse 22. Hallelujah. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried, saying, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. He answered her not a word. His disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. He said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and did what? Verse 25. Worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered, said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. He said, Truth, Lord, yet the dog did the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said, unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Amen. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. That's right. Now let's, let's dissect this for a moment. A woman whose, whose daughter was grievously vexed, attacked by the enemy, and probably needed a healing as well as a deliverance. She comes to Jesus. Now she was not a Jew. At this time, Jesus, how many knows he first came to the Jews? That's what the Bible said. Yeah. Amen. Romans chapter 1, to the Jews first and then also to the Greek. But when he first came, how I many knows when he first came, he came to the Jews first? Yeah. Come on, that's what the Word of God said. Yes. Later, later, Paul stepped in to another dispensation of it and began to minister to the Gentiles. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So it's for the Jews first and also to the Greek. And of course, Paul was the one that said that in Romans chapter 1. <laughs> and so here we're looking at Jesus saying, listen, it, it's not me or it's not right that I would take the children's bread. He called healing and deliverance the children's bread. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said, it's not right me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dog. Now, he wasn't calling her a dog. That's what they called the Gentiles at that time. He wasn't trying to slander her. He was just saying... You're not a Jew, and I've been sent to the Jews first. I mean, catching what I'm talking about. Yeah, come on. Yeah. And she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat of the crumbs. She literally said this, your bread is so powerful that if all I got was a crumb that fell from your table, from your bread, one crumb, my daughter would be totally healed and delivered. Amen. By one crumb from your bread. Boy, somebody needs to catch the faith of this one. Now get this. <laughs> Healing and deliverance is the children's bread. We get the whole loaf in the spirit. Yeah. So how much power do we have? <laughs> when it only takes a crumb to totally heal you and set you free, yet we as God's children grafted in can get the whole loaf. All of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Amen. This woman had great faith because she understood how powerful the bread was. How powerful Jesus was. One taste of him. One taste of Jesus is enough to heal you. One taste of his love and goodness is enough, enough to deliver you. One taste of precious Jesus can cause miracles, signs, and wonders 
to happen in your life. Blinded eyes can see with one taste of Jesus. Deaf ears can hear with one taste of Jesus. Tumors of growth disappear with one taste of Jesus. Dental miracles happen with one taste of Jesus. Yet we get the whole loaf. <laughs> We get the whole loaf. Jesus said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, just a little bit, you'd command a big mountain to go, and it would. Isn't it amazing? Jesus said, faith in me is so powerful that if you just had a little bit and would use it, and would use it, a big mountainous problem would be removed. The devil comes along and says, it takes a mountain of faith to get rid of a little mustard seed problem. I mean, that's what the devil says. He's a liar. He switched it around on us. It only takes a little faith in Jesus, just a little taste of his greatness and goodness to cause a mountainous problem to be removed. Just a little taste of his goodness. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the next thing he said, once you have the bread... You're looking, into, you're looking into Jesus, focusing on Jesus, receiving Him, worshiping Him. And let me tell you something. Thanksgiving is one of the highest forms of worship. I said, it's one of the highest forms of worship. Lord, I just thank You for who You are. Remember this. Worship has to be when you appreciate what He's worth. That's right. Worship. That's the, that's the Anglo-Saxon root word of the word worship. Worth-ship. Lord, I thank you because you're so mighty. You're so glorious. You're so wonderful. You're so excellent. You're, you're the master of the universe. You're the creator of all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Whew. There's nothing too hard for you. I just thank you. Mm for filling all my teeth. I just thank you for healing my eyes. I just yeah. thank you for healing me of diabetes. I yeah. just thank you for removing tumors and growths. I just thank you for healing my heart, my lungs, my back, my kidneys. Yeah. I just thank you for miracle signs and wonders because that's easy for you yeah. because you're so great and mighty. Mm. I'll tell you what, just while I was doing that, the power of God was flowing in this room. Mm. Oh, yeah. It'll flow in you too if you do the same thing. Do that tonight. Watch what happens. Then he said this. He said, he said, tell them that I'm the high priest of their confession. Go to Hebrews 3. This is an awesome revelation that the Lord gave me. And I'm going to tell you what he said after we read this verse. In Hebrews 3.1... Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession or confession, Christ Jesus. Jesus is the high priest yeah. of our confession. In other words, this is what he said to me. Whatever my people confess me to be for them, that's how I'm going to minister to them. Jesus, I confess that you're my Lord and Savior. Yeah. What happens to you? He comes and gives you salvation. He yeah. starts ministering as a high priest and gives you salvation. Jesus, I praise you because you're Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. You're my healer. Yeah. So now he heard your confession and he's going to start ministering to you in line with that confession and releasing healing to you. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, I confess you as my banker. The one who provides everything for me. You are. In fact, I confess you to be Jehovah Jireh to me. El Shaddai to me. Hallelujah. You're my provider and you're the all-sufficient one. And I confess you as that to me. Is anyone catching this? Because he's the high priest of our confession. He ministers according to our confession of who he is to us. It's even how you get saved. It's how you get healed. It's how you get delivered. It's how you, how you have all your needs met and your prayers answered. Whew, that's huge. Now get this. Jesus, I confess, you are my...